Hello, I'm Caesar. And I'm Lulu. And we are here on Carnival Cruise. It is embarkation day, and we got some fresh tips from you guys because we just embarked. We put this video together for you guys. So this is Carnival Cruise embarkation tips. Call your bank if you have credit cards or your debit card. It's better if you call your bank before you travel so everything's in order to use your card during your travel time. That way you don't get blocked. We went to Cancun one time and I did not notify the bank and they actually blocked my car. But good thing Lulu's car, we had her car so we had to use her car for the rest of the time. This time we were able to do it on the app. And it was easy, it was probably less than one minute. So do not forget to let your bank know you're traveling. Our next tip is to get a luggage tag. We're gonna link one up in the description box below, but you need a luggage tag, okay? So if you don't have a tag, they recommend you tape it or you staple it to your bag. And if you do that, it's gonna rip off and your bag is never gonna get to you. So make sure you get a luggage tag. Another recommendation is drop off your bags with a bag porter. So what we do is we drop it off. We actually give them a tip. It's recommended you give them $1 per bag, but it's your money. You guys decide how you want to tip them. The thing is you give your bag to the bag porter. That way you walk on the ship with just your bag that we have. Like I had my backpack. She had her purse. That way we're not wheeling around luggage. There's people going up the steps, going down the steps with luggage elevators are crazy packed because everybody has bags you're going to be waiting in line you know if you have a heavy bag that you can't even carry up the steps that's going to be a problem so you guys need to make sure you just drop your bag off and then i say a couple hours after sell off you should have your bag with you in front of your room Talking about room key, Carnival calls it the sell and sign card. And there's gonna be an envelope next to your door that has your room key or your sell and sign card. And that's not gonna be available until a couple, after, a couple hours after you go on your ship. So you have to be on the lookout for that when it's available. And then once it is, you are good to go and you can enter your room with your room key. Before that, before you get your room key, you can only buy your stuff, whatever you want to buy, with your boarding pass. This barcode is in your boarding pass. After you have your key, then you're good to go with just your key. So another good tip I recommend is just bring some kind of card. Like this card is one of those prepaid cards. So it doesn't have any money on it anymore. But the thing with Carnival is they try to save electricity. So you have to put your card inside the key slot and then that way it activates the electricity in the room. So what we do is we bring one of these every time, we put it in there, and then that way we have electricity. That way we don't have to use our room keys because let's say our room key's in there, let's say I'm taking a shower, Lulu wants to go up shopping or something or gambling, she <laughs> could go ahead and just leave this card in there and then she could take her sell and sign card. That way we're not messing up with the electricity or the lights that's inside the room. Check out under your bed because in the newer ships, they have storage to put your luggage under your bed. So that way you get it out the way and it's not just hanging out right there off the side. Blocking your way. Blocking your way out. So it's a good thing that they came up with that. Get it out the way, storage. Now we're gonna talk about Faster to the Fun. So what Faster to the Fun is, it's a program that gets you on the ship faster to the fun. So what it is, is it charges one price per cabin. So we're actually on a seven day cruise right now. So if we wanted to add faster to the fun to our cruise, it would have been $79.99. So you're looking at $80 and that's per stateroom, not per person. So let's just say, you know, you're traveling with your whole family, you have the kids and everything, it's gonna be one upfront price. The con with that is it sells out pretty quick. And what it is, is depending on how many diamond and platinum Carnival Cruise members are on the ship, depending on how many Faster to the Fun they're gonna sell. Because those card members already get Faster to the Fun. That's one of the perks of, of sailing with Carnival. And to get platinum or to get diamond, you have to sell 100 cruise days with Carnival. So it is fair that they do get the perks um, to get on the ship faster. 
the way Carnival Cruise works is they give you a 30 minute arrival appointment window. So you have 30 minutes within that window to show up and to check in and to get on the ship. If you come any earlier, they are not gonna let you in. We came only 10 minutes before our actual window, so they let us in, we didn't have a problem. But uh, we've heard of people that come way too early and they just have them wait outside the building, they don't even let them inside. And then with that said, you better be not that late because if you come late, the ship is not gonna wait for you. I will tell you guys that right now. Next tip is be on the lookout for the fun times guide because this has everything you need to know about your trip right here on activities and all that good stuff. They have that in every single room. If not, you can just download everything in the app. Yes, the Carnival Hub app does have all these activities and you can also buy the chat feature. So what the chat feature is, you pay $5 per cell phone per person for the entire time. It's only $5 and you guys could communicate through the app. We don't use the app too much because this is the wifey right here and I hold on to her and I don't let her go anywhere. She can't go to the pool or any of that good stuff. No, but we're uh, pretty much inseparable when it comes to cruises. So we haven't bought that personally, so we can't tell you guys how it is. We have heard that it's a little glitchy. It signs off and signs on, but it is $5. I think that's all right to have actually uh, be able to chat while you're here on the cruise. Mm -hmm. One of our recommendations is once you get on the ship, just go orientate yourself, look all around, do a tour. We actually jump on YouTube and then we search tour videos for that ship that we're gonna be going on. For instance, this ship that we're on right now is the Carnival Breeze. So I jumped on there, I, I'm familiar where everything's gonna be at. So we were ready to rock and roll as soon as we got on. Talking about tours, we're gonna do our own tour about this ship Carnival Breeze. So if you guys are gonna travel in this ship one day or maybe in the future, stay tuned because we're gonna upload that video for you. So in Carnival Cruise, you can bring a 12 pack of soda or juice, but it has to be in a can or in carton. It cannot be in a bottle. Unless you find water that you could get in a carton or a can, you cannot bring it. Another thing you could bring on Carnival Cruise is a 750 milliliter bottle of wine or champagne. So you do have to carry that on. Do not put it in your checked bag or they will not allow it in. It has to be carried on. You do have to be 21 years of age and you could just bring that right on. Do not forget to bring your corkscrew because there is a $15 cork fee. So you do not want to pay the $15, make sure you bring your corkscrew. Yeah, that's pretty much another drink. So if you don't want to spend another drink there, then just bring it from your house. Please check in online. No matter how many cruises we've been to, we always run into somebody that hasn't checked in until embarkation day. So you're gonna be tying up the line, one, and then two, you're not gonna be able to print all your documents you need to come. And that's one thing I suggest. You check in online, you get all your documents, you print them out, even if you buy any drinking packages like the Cheers package, or if you buy any excursions, I print all that out and I bring all that with me, ready to rock and roll, and I'm ready for the cruise. We're actually a little nerdy when it comes to having our stuff printed out. We have everything printed out, our airline, what we're gonna do, all that good stuff. Very organized. Right here. I recommend that you travel with a passport. You don't have to have the passport book, but you can get a passport card. The passport card is a lot cheaper than the book, and you could use the card for sailing, and you could use the card for land. So this comes in handy when you're going on a ship because you could use it during your cruise. If you don't have a passport, you could actually travel with your government issued state ID and your birth certificate. The thing with that is if you get any kind of trouble or an emergency goes on while you're in another country, you cannot fly back to the US. So this one is kind of fishy, but you can travel with your birth certificate and with your ID if you're cruising out of a US city and you're gonna finish your cruise at another US city or that same US city. Like for instance, if we're, we're cruising out of Orlando, Florida and we're coming back to Orlando, Florida, so technically we could have an ID and our birth certificate with us if we're a US citizen. 
So in the next example, if we're leaving from Orlando, Florida, and we're going to the Dominican Republic, and that is the last stop, and it does not come back to the US, then you're gonna need a passport book because that, how are you gonna get back to the US? You need to fly back, so you need a passport book. Do not forget to check in with your cell phone provider to make sure of all the ports of calls that you're going to that you're gonna have service. So I was kind of surprised that this cruise, uh, we are not covered by going to uh, St. Thomas Rico. and Puerto Rico. And uh, St. Thomas is a part of the US Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico is a US territory. And for some reason, <laughs> we have a US cell phone plan and we are not covered. So that was kind of weird to me, but make sure you guys do it. That way you're not paying the big bill. Another tip is put your phone in airplane mode. That way you're not roaming. Once you get back to the US or back home, you're gonna find a big bill because you forgot to put your phone on airplane mode. So one thing we do on embarkation day is we never miss sailing away. We just, something about it, we have to go up on the top deck and we have to watch us sail out of port. I think it's very romantic. <laughs> it is romantic and it's something cool that we do and we do not miss it. Another thing you could do is the sail away party. So we like to have fun on the sail away party. We even have a couple dance moves that we do out there and it's, it's just fun and just something we do. It's like, a, it's like starting our vacation off right. Starting the party. Get the party started. On embarkation day, you have to do a mandatory safety briefing. And it's not the most exciting thing, but you do have to hear what they have to say. That's gonna, for everyone. It's for everybody, you have to be there. They're gonna show you where to meet up at. Nothing really crazy. Just in case of emergency. Yeah, just in case. So you do have to do that on the first day before you sell away. If you have any additional tips for embarkation day at Carnival Cruise, please add them in the comment box below. Every viewer is going to appreciate that. And we will see you guys on the next video. Bye.